Welcome to the Brain Pick a Pro Show, live from Lake Wiley, South Carolina. Thanks for being on today. Whether you're watching on video or audio or on the website, iTunes, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, thank you so much for being here. We really, really, really appreciate it. I know I don't say it enough, but we appreciate you watching, appreciate you listening and the feedback. So please, please share this and uh, give us some feedback. We love it. I try to bring on this show, I have two shows, Brag Radio, which is a Facebook Live, Be Rich and Generous. Candace and I do that show. And this one where I interview rock stars in real estate, people who are movers and shakers, people who serve the investment community and, and that sort of thing. So if you like it, if you're enjoying it, please, please share, comment, and uh, give us some feedback, show us some love. We really, really appreciate that. So let me just jump right in. Today's guest is a guy, Dave Orloff. He is, has been in the mortgage business for years. He is the CFO of American Heritage Lending. And it's a lending organization, hard money and some other loan programs, just for the real estate investor community. And he's got a lot to share today. You're going to learn a lot about how the whole mortgage industry works, about uh, about what to do and, and how to get loans and that sort of thing, different types of loans that are available. So please give a good welcome to Dave. What's up, buddy? How are you, Larry? Thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Man, it's my pleasure. I'm glad to do it. And uh, so why don't you start out and tell our, uh, tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself. Glad to. So coming up on <clears throat> about 20 years in the business, uh, focused in the early days on your traditional mortgage banking, serving homeowners and dealing with big banks and everything in between. And um, over the last several years, we've shifted our focus and we're dealing uh, exactly as you mentioned with the real estate investors, um, more of a business to business transaction. We have some unique new products available for them if they're looking to you know, find property for quick acquisition all the way through buy and hold cash flow type products where right. the underwrite is a lot like a, a commercial loan. That's good. That's good. So, um, and you, you're pretty much just about nationwide, right? We are. So there's about 10 states we don't lend in, um, but we cover pretty much the entire nation. That's good. That's good. So tell us a little bit about the different types of loans that you have. You know, are they, are they uh, transactional funding, just hard money, fix and flip loans, landlord loans, or what? It's a great, great question. So I, I kind of think of it in just a couple buckets. The first one is our fix and flip product, um, which has been very active over the last, I'd call it two years. Uh -huh. um, and that's exactly what you'd expect. I don't have to give you any description on that loan product. Um, we have your traditional hard money. Um, you know, somebody needs to acquire a property quickly. They don't have time to do any type of underwrite. We take a look at that collateral, take a look at the borrower, can fund those in as little as five days. And then this unique category where, you know, if folks were looking to buy, you know, single family homes and rent them out and make the spread on cash flow, positive cash flow, right. they had choices like going to a bank or, or being underwritten traditionally by sending in pay stubs and bank statements and tax returns and all, all the like. Right. But our, our, you know, our similar industries like commercial loans, if you're buying an apartment building or, or an office building, they looked at the rental income to support the debt service on that, on that loan. And we've developed a product where we do basically the same thing. So it's, it's a neat way for real estate investors whether they need to finance more than 10 properties or whatever caveat the bank kind of pigeonholes them into, uh, um, this is a really neat, exciting new product for us to go out and help folks kind of use leverage on real estate, increase their returns, and not have to go through a, a nightmare underwriting process. I hear you. So uh, you mentioned underwriting process. Tell us a little bit about that. What, what is the process? I mean, are you is it strictly asset-based or are you looking for – somebody with a certain credit score or somebody with a certain amount of experience? Uh, what we, we call it is we're somewhere between asset based and uh, an institutional feel for commercial lending. So we are going to look at a credit score. 
but we're looking at a credit event history, not necessarily a certain FICO range is what we land on. Um, we're definitely taking 90% of the underwrite decision uh, and we're looking at that from a collateral perspective. So like I said, it's, it's primarily the asset. What does it generate? What condition is it in? And then I'd say the remainder is the borrower's experience. But, you know, nowadays, if you've done two, you're, you know, you're an expert. I know. How, how important is experience to you as a lender? I mean, you're putting money out on the street and, you know, you're not in the real estate business. You're in the finance business. And you, you don't want to get the property back, right? So how important is experience to a lender like yourself? It's amazing that you bring that up. Um, every day we talk to folks that think, well, gosh, why wouldn't you just do a loan on this property? You know, it's 60% LTV. And worst case, you get the property back. But you're absolutely right. That's the last thing we as lenders want to see happen. Right. So we have, a, we have a whole back office team that does feasibility reports. We look at scope of work. We make sure you're making a good decision. Uh, we look at surrounding areas. We do a very heavy underwrite on that collateral and the decision to put our money out as basically a partner. You know, We're going to get alongside you and or your contractor team and make sure that you're doing, doing a good deal that makes sense. That's really good. It's interesting that you mentioned partner. Dave, because it really is, I mean, you know, the investor can't do the deal without money and you can't deploy your money without a borrower that knows what they're doing and how to see it through to completion, right? We are, you know, so I'd say in the traditional mortgage sense, the deal's done when, you know, the refi or that purchase transaction closes. Ours is just really beginning, and you're absolutely right. You know, we're staying involved in the construction process. If it's fix and flip, if it's just more traditional, we're making sure whatever whatever need and and um, opportunity presented itself to the real estate investor, we're staying alongside them during that process to make sure that they capitalize on that opportunity. Good, good. So, uh, run through a typical process of somebody. Uh from initially reaching out to you on your website or whatever through to closing? How does that process take place? So we're easy to find. Um, call comes in, email, whatever it is, comes in. Um, we're going to do a very, very light, quote unquote, uh, underwrite, like we said. you know, At, at first, we're going to ask you a little bit about the product uh, you're looking for and what, what project scope you have in mind. Is this something you're going to you know, buy? You're going to fix up and you're going to rent out. You're going to flip it. What are you going to do? And we're going to model those numbers real quick, Larry. And I'd say within the first 20 to 30 minutes, we're going to know if this is a product that um, fits one of our loan programs. And, and from there, we'll be able to determine, yeah, we're interested. We'd like to partner with you on this. And then the application process is simple. It's you know a two-page loan app. It's about four or five supporting documents. We do the work uh, in the back office and we're able to get back and, and, you know, make a lending decision quickly. Good. So, uh, so once you, once you get an approval to someone, then what happens from there? So once, the, once the loan's approved in, in, you know, internally here with our underwriting staff, um, it's basically just like you'd expect with an escrow company, making sure funds are delivered on time. We do all of our funding in-house, so uh, it's directly wired in. That process is usually only two to three days. The money's deployed. We even do a lot where we're you know, financing the rehab costs. And if it's a big construction budget, the only additional thing that I think is, is process-oriented would be you know, we'll set up subsequent draws. And right. we're monitoring the progress such that we're communicating back and forth with, with – um, the disbursement folks saying, okay, you know, we're at this process uh, step and milestone. It's time to release the next set of funding and, and we'll manage that for, for our partners as well. Good. So, so you hold back some of the money in escrow if you're funding the, the rehab and then there's like draw requests and draw releases, correct? That's exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. So tell us a little bit about, um, about some of the required documentation, like, uh, maybe a rehab estimate, appraisal, tax returns, copies of LLCs. 
that sort of thing. So our typical underwrite, and this is probably getting pretty far in the weeds, but you have experienced folks on the show. Um, you know, we're going to take a look at, like I said, first of all, that credit report, we're going to get a full appraisal done and we're going to match that to a scope of work. So if you don't have that and it's, it's not, you know, you're not used to formal documentation, we can certainly supply you with that. We can help you complete those. We're going to run what we call kind of a profit or a model in internally here to make sure based upon uh, what comes back on that appraisal with, you know, after repaired value, we're going to look at comps and we're going to size up, you know, does this meet a threshold of profitability with enough margin of error that we like it? Um, and then, you know, we're going to look at just the basic stuff, you know, homeowners insurance. Um, we're going to look at your entity documentation. Is it in good standing? Can we see the uh, organization structure, whether LLC or corp? Uh, we're going to vet that out. Um, that's about it. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Now, uh, you guys are based out of uh, California, right? We are in Southern California, um, right kind of near the coast between LA and San Diego. Oh, cool. Cool. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Awesome. So, um, in, in getting an appraisal, uh, how in the world do you find a local appraiser Every you know in forty different states, or do you have a national service you use, and then they sub it out to somebody in their network? So we we are now relying on three different um, appraisal partners that their their management companies um, vet and train appraisals for this specific type of lending because you have to kind of no more than go out measure take photos look at comps right. you have to understand where the property is today and where it will be in. X number of months when completed. Right. Um, but yeah, we, we rely on, on um, three different vendors for that. Okay, good. And you get what's called an ARV or after repaired value appraisal, right? We get an ARV. And then for this new loan product, we even uh, make sure we have a rental summary uh, and we look at rental comps as well. So we're no, you know, we, we, we go into it knowing, Hey, if, if this is uh, a fix to rent, if you add a bedroom, add a bathroom, whatever you're going to do to the property, we have a real good idea what that's going to rent for when you're, when you're finished. Okay, good, good, good. So um, now I'm assuming the investor pays for the appraisal. They pay for that up front, right? They pay for it up front. Um, from time to time, uh, you know, we can charge that through for our partners that are repeat customers and things sure. like that. But yeah. Sure. That's good. That's good. Yeah, your website looks very, very easy to navigate. Tells about your different kind of services. You've got a, a, a uh, an adjustable loan. You've got some refinances, some traditional loans too, right? So that uh, the website you're on is our corporate website. Okay. We have another another specialty site you should check out. It's uh, www.yourbridgelender.com. Your Bridge Lender your bridge lender. And that speaks more to our fix and flips. Okay. Um, stuff like that. That's good. That's good. Oh yeah. 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 Awesome. awesome. That, a, l a little bit more fun. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. So, um, tell us a little bit about your terms. So the, uh, the fix and flip or anything that's kind of that acquisition strategy were 12 month term interest only payment, um, real simple stuff. If you, if you don't want to make payments, we can escrow it for you. Um, we make that really, really easy. And then on this new program, everything you sort of expect from a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac type product, we have those terms. So, you know, one, three, five, seven, 10 year adjustable periods. We right. have 30 year fixed. We have 15 year fixed. We have 20 year fixed. Um, so you can match up payment with your goals, uh, wh whichever way you want to create your loan. Good, good. Fix and flip, buy to rent, refinance, bridge loans. That's, that's cool. That's cool. Um, is it, uh, are you able to tell us like some of the interest rate ranges and stuff like that? on the different programs. You're going to, you're going to make me do that today, Larry. No, <laughs> no, we, 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 we expect to compete on rates. So the backstory 
we're supported and, and semi-partnered, I guess you'd call it, with a large hedge fund out of wow. New York. So okay. our capital is institutional class. So what you should expect with that is, is a lower rate structure than typical hard money. Um, so we're in the single digits. I'd say the high single digits is a starting point. Um, That's and, great. Uh, Good. I don't know why you, uh, you know, <laughs> said that because man, that's great. Like I do hard money in the Carolinas, right? Okay. I'm 12% in five points, right? So that that's, can I invest with you? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so here in California, obviously we have bigger loan amounts and what have you, but, um, we haven't done a deal in the double digits so far, I'd say in the last six months that our rates are really compressed. Wow. Uh, that's great, man. That's great. See, I yeah. probably should have kept my mouth shut because now <laughs> people are going to be refining. I'm going to get some payoffs from you in the next 30 to 60 days, right? <laughs> you asked the question, buddy. I know, right? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So um, tell us a little bit about the, uh, about the uh, buy-to-rent program, the landlord loans. I mean, that sounds pretty good because a lot of people just think of hard money lenders as just – fix and flip lenders, right? Rehab loans, but you've got some longer term money available, right? I'm, this is sort of my little pet passion. You know, I, I'm a real estate investor myself. I've flipped houses. I own properties that I rent out. And it's just amazing that if you think about what a bank would require, uh, right. If you're going to go buy a rental house, you know, you need to put at least 25% down and you need to send two years tax returns, pay stubs, and they want to look through everything. If you can get that loan, then they put caps on you. You can't finance more than these number of properties. And, right. you know, they, they hit you with the debt that you're accumulating along the way. And it just becomes extremely difficult to qualify for those loans. Right. So it just never made sense to me when you have an instrument for investment that produces a payment, you know, monthly income payment stream, why can't you use that to qualify the asset? And that's exactly how it's done in multifamily lending and commercial lending. Well, after months and months of work, we kind of came up with a test product that does it exactly that way. Uh -huh. So um, this program is going to look at you know, you, you bought the house for a hundred thousand dollars, you're financing $75,000 and the cost is, you know, five, 600 bucks a month all in right. you're renting it out for $900 a month. We see that that's a good investment. Exactly. So it's really, I, I, I overuse the term, but I think this landlord loan or, or uh, rental long-term hold loan, is a real common sense underwrite. That's awesome. And, and, and it makes sense to me because unlike a hard money loan, the investors making the payments out of their pocket with the landlord loan, you got the investor on the hook and you have the tenant, right? I, I read a, a great headline on a friend of mine's email the other day that said, you know, is your uh, rental house, you know, is your investment paying for itself? And, and you're absolutely right. That tenant is making that payment why shouldn't you be able to use some leverage to go out and scale your business or, exactly. you know, pay off some other hard money loans you have on properties? Right, um, right. Because these, you know, those rates drop into the fives and sixes, Larry, for long-term money, right? So it's very competitive. Yeah, it, it, it mirrors more of a bank product. Um, and, and the reason I'm imagining that, that it does resemble a bank product is because you are using institutional money and you can get it at a very low rate. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Good, good, good. That's awesome. So um, are you able to make any loans to people that, you know, maybe they're getting started or whatever, maybe they've been in construction, but they haven't done their own fix and flip, or are you looking for somebody that's done at least one or two? We really understand that, um, you got to get started somewhere. So all we really ask, or maybe where we tighten up on our internal guidelines, if you're brand new would be, you know, don't, don't go take a project down that needs, you know, a ton of work or, or don't think you're going to go tear walls down and add a bunch of addition. Let's go get started on more of a cosmetic flip. Sure. Um, 
you know, repaint, kind of, you know, scrape some ceilings, do something like that. Uh, don't, don't go take a giant, giant leap into the business because you and I know uh, uh, we've, we've invested long enough. It's never like you think it's going to be when you start pulling walls down <laughs> and you find prod problems everywhere. So we have no problem financing a first timer. Um, and, you know, again, partnering with you, hoping that you come back, hoping that you have a good experience, hoping that you make money. Right. Um, it, let's just start with a little bit of uh, an easier product uh, or easier uh, project. You know what? I'm so glad that you that we're talking about this because so many people think that they could just go out. Oh, I found this house. I can pick it up for a hundred thousand. It needs another hundred thousand in work, and it'll be worth three hundred thousand. Right? I'm going to make two hundred grand on this. But you know, they've never and and not to mention that they live in California and the house is in Texas. Right? <laughs> so <clears throat> it's very very important that that people understand that you got to start somewhere, but don't start with, it's like most people who own multifamily did not, did not start with multifamily, right? I mean, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Um, so I would, I would comment there that I think that is such wise advice. You know, we all love the HGTV shows and it, it makes it look really, really, really easy and you can depend on your service providers. Um, but the truth is that it's a business for a reason and it takes good management and it takes good oversight and it takes, you know, some, some great planning. And even then, right, even us pros that have done it a long time, we get stuck. And, um, and you got to know how to work through those problems. And, and, and I don't mind saying I hate rehabs. I hate them. <laughs> I don't do them, won't do them. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that you can't make a ton of money out there. I mean, I know people that love it. Now, I used to love it. I used to love going into a project, smelling the, the smell of the fresh cut wood, you know, putting up walls and stuff. I used to love that. You know, I would show up at a job site, bring them snacks and drinks, and they love that, you know, check on the project. But anymore, I don't. I don't enjoy it. I don't want to do it. You can't make me. You can't make me. But I used to. I used to love it. And there's a lot of people out there making a ton of money doing rehabs. And they need people like you to be able to help partner with them to fund their projects. So, um, Tell us a little bit about this. As far as uh, somebody coming to you for a loan, are they going to need 20% down or 30% down or, or whatever? Or how does that work? You know, a good rule of thumb is about 25% down if you're just looking for us to do a regular hard money loan. Right. On the fix and flip, you'd be surprised, but we'll go up to about 85% loan to cost. So we're going to look at the acquisition price. Plus what your you know, budget states you're going to use and need for construction financing. And we're really, we're willing to be at about 85% of that dollar amount. So, which means they're going to need to put down about, they're going to need to have about 15% down plus some reserves, correct? That's correct. That's yeah. absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm um, sure you do require reserve. I mean, we do, we require six months worth of reserves. We're easier than that. We're easier than that. Yeah. I, I don't want to take all your business. So no, we're, we're easier than that. And, That's good. Uh, and I think we understand that, or at least, you know, hopefully it's not a false sense of security, but we do quite a bit of due diligence internally, like I said, with kind of that feasibility review. And we're looking at all those factors and hoping that we've made a good lending decision. We're partnering with somebody that knows what they're doing and they're going to have a successful project outcome. That's awesome. Because That's I think, cool. I think it's, you know, it's high leverage. When you think about lending your own money and I think about lending my own money, I wouldn't want to put out 85% of, of, uh, you know, the total amount invested. I think that's pretty risky, but, um, we believe we've got some underwriting tools to, to help us get comfortable with that. That's great. That's great. See, I have to be a little more conservative because it's my own money. I don't have a hedge fund I'm working with. I don't have, you know, I don't have institutional money. So 
you know, I works hard for my money <laughs> and I want to make sure that I get it back. <laughs> As you should. As you <laughs> <Right>? should. Yes. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And my wife actually does all of our hard money lending. You know, I heard somebody say a long time ago, you know, have the person managing your money that you're sleeping with. So <laughs> I love that. If you don't mind, I'm going to, if that's not copyrighted, I'm going to share that uh, somewhere else today. There you go. That's good. Give me credit for it. <laughs> I will. I will. That's good, man. So what other kind of words of wisdom would you like to share about, uh, about somebody that's, that's, that's looking to do some projects, whether they want to build a portfolio or they want to do some fix and flips? Uh, what kind of words of wisdom would you like to share? You know, I've, I've just, uh, really enjoy this time. And I think you and I have philosophically the same thoughts about um, real estate and risk and, right. um, you know, preparing uh, for, for what we're all looking for is, you know, kind of some independence and wealth and some, uh, some creative ways to solve that income uh, burden. Right? right. So when it, when, these new programs came available where we could help an investor through that entire life scale, uh, life, life cycle and help them scale whatever segment of the business they were most interested in. I became quite passionate at this opportunity to help people buy and hold real estate and, and get long-term financing. And, you know, it, it becomes, you know, it's, it's maybe too cliche, but it becomes a little bit like Monopoly, right? We're going to start small and we're just going to build one house at a time. And, and uh, uh, um, my advice is start slow. Don't take on too much. Uh, TV shows make it look easy, but um, oh, no. that's it. That's true, man. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you, apply for a loan, you know, get started with you, how would they do that? So you can reach us through the website, yourbridgelender.com. Um, you can always call us uh, toll free, 800-731-9226. And my email is dave at ahlend.com. Awesome. Dave at ahlend.com. That's awesome. Dave, I really, really appreciate you being on today. This has been really cool. Thanks a lot for sharing. And I hope you don't take too much of my business. I won't. I promise. Thank you, Larry. It's, uh, it's been absolutely my pleasure. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, buddy. Take care. You too. All right. Thanks. Thanks.